In the previous tutorial, we've looked at how this Messenger REST API application is a standard servlet application, and uh, there being a servlet from the Jersey package, which handles your input requests, and it's mapped to certain URLs. Now the question is what happens when the request comes in? Now Jersey has identified the URL up to the resource name. Now what does it do after that? How does Jersey know what to do with that request? The thing is Jersey doesn't really know what to do with that request. The servlet that is configured in the web.xml is kind of like the starting point. After that, to handle a resource request, Jersey kind of expects there to be some code that you've written so that it hands over the responsibility of handling that request to you, right, to your code. So think about this for a minute. So this is like the URL for the API, right? This is what we saw. So this is the URL for the API. Anything onwards is gonna be resources. So let's say, let's take our Messenger application. So we would have a resource called messages slash something, right, the message ID. So this is one valid resource URL. And there's also, comments slash the comment ID, which is another resource URL. And then you have profiles, which is a collection resource. And then you have the profile ID, which is another URL. So all these are different URLs. And all the thing that all of these have in common is this particular thing, which you've already seen. But now each one of these URLs point to a particular resource. And that resource has specific logic that you would need, right? So this cannot be abstracted out. This is not something common. It is application specific. What happens when somebody does a get request to slash profiles slash Kaushik? Well, that depends on the implementation. You would want to write that code. So that's what Jersey does as well. So any resource request that comes in is actually handled by a class that you write, right? So to handle a resource, what you write are classes called resources, okay? So if you expand the SRC main Java, you have in the R Kaushik Java Brains package, you have something called myresource.java. This is the standard class that came bundled with the project template that we used, right? So you remember when we did my resource, we got this response, got it, right? So this was a resource that was bundled in the project itself. When we made a get request to it, we got a text response. Now this is the class which is handling that request, right? So Jersey servlet looks for classes like this to handle a request. There's only one resource in this project right now, so let's open that up. Now I could talk about what this class actually does and what's going on here, but that's not all that exciting it's actually much more fun to write code than to read somebody else's code, and I hope you agree. So I'm gonna set this class aside, and we're gonna create a new class. We're gonna create our own resource handler, and uh, we'll have a test method, and we'll handle a request, and we'll learn what it takes to create a resource from the scratch. So what this does is this, you know, pre-built my resource, uh, resource URL, right? So we're gonna create our own resource URL called messages, you know, we talked about the API for our messenger application and one of the first resources would be messages. So let's build a class which handles that. Right now, if I access messages, I get nothing, right? I get a 404 because there's nothing to handle this resource URL. So let's create a simple resource handler which just returns some static text, just like the my resource does and we'll enhance it as we go. So how do we create this? How do we create a new message uh, resource URL and a handler for it? So the first step would be to create a new class, okay? So the way to do that is I'm gonna go to uh, my Project Explorer, right click here and say new class. And I'm gonna call this class message resource, okay? So this is a class which handles web API slash messages resource URL. So I'm gonna call this message resource. And I don't, want it, I don't want this to be in the root package. So I'm gonna create a package called resources, okay? So a new package called resources, a new class called message resource. That's the first step. 
Now, this is what you need to build upon, right? So you need to add code in this class to do something when web API slash messages is accessed, right? So let's say our, in our simplistic example, when somebody says uh, slash messages, you want to return some static text, right? Like hello world or something like that. So we need some functionality in this class to return that, right? So we need some functionality that returns hello world. So let's go ahead and build that, right? So I'm going to do a public string. I'm going to return a string, uh, get messages. The method name really doesn't matter. I'm just calling it get messages because we are getting messages. And I'm just going to return the string hello world. And I'm going to save this class, right? It's a simple method which returns a string. Now what I want to do is tell Jersey to execute this method of this class when this URL is called and take the return type, take the return value of that method and send that back as a response, right? So you want Jersey to delegate the execution to this method, take the return value and that's what should show up when this URL is accessed. Now, how do we do that? The first thing is we need to tell Jersey that there is a class like this available over here for it to look up, right? So it's just another class lying in the class path. How does Jersey know that it's something that it needs to consider? So the way to do that is, well, you don't, act, you don't actually have to do anything here and I'll tell you the reason why. So you open web.xml, uh, this is the servlet class that Jersey uh, bootstraps the application with, right? And there is this section called init param. This init param takes a param name, which is Jersey config server provider packages. Very long name, but basically what it's looking for is the name of the package where you want Jersey to look up for such things, right? So right now the param value is org.kaushik.javabrains.messenger. So it's basically this package. So you're basically telling Jersey hey, when somebody makes a request and you're not sure which class needs to handle it, you just look up this package and see what are the classes inside that package and see if there's any one class which can potentially handle that request. So this is basically the package that Jersey needs to you know, focus on, right? This is what Jersey looks up. Now there could be a hundred different classes in this package, it doesn't matter. We're gonna talk about how Jersey narrows down which class it picks later. But the fact is Jersey just starts looking at this package. It's gonna look at all the classes in this package, right? So that's what init param is. Now, thanks to init param, uh, and since we have our class inside this package, you know, it may not be in the root, but it's in a sub package. So it is in this package, right? So, well, you don't have to do anything else. Jersey, it looks at this as a possible contender. But now, since there could be multiple classes, you need to tell Jersey, hey, this is a class which handles slash messages. The way to map that is by actually using an annotation, right? So you annotate this class to map to this URL path, right? And the way to do that is using the path annotation. So you just say at path, and then you use the path slash messages. Now the add path annotation is from javax.ws.rs package. I'm just gonna import that. And now this class is annotated with add path and this path. So whenever there is a slash messages that's called, what Jersey does is it looks up for all the classes in this package, which has the add path annotation of slash messages, which is the path that it's trying to match. And as long as it finds that, it says, hey, I got the class. Okay, so it's narrowed down to the class. But now, how do you make it execute this particular method? Because honestly, there could be a whole lot of methods in this single class. Now, how do you narrow it down to one method? And that's not the only problem, right? So even here, this URL, of course we mapped the URL, but then there could be a get request to this URL there could be a post request to this URL. So there are multiple HTTP methods that could be sent to this URL. And there could be multiple class methods over here. So what Jersey provides is a way to map an HTTP method, if it's a get or a post or whatever, to a Java method in this class, right? So we've now mapped a URL to a class. Now we're gonna map 
an HTTP method to a Java method. I hope that makes sense. So now what we are mapping is a GET request, right? So when a GET request is made to this URL, you want one particular method, Java method to get called. So the way to map a GET request to this method is to simply use another annotation called GET. This is GT all caps. Again, this is from the same package. So we're just gonna import that. So now we have the second level of mapping, right? So the URL maps to the class and the HTTP method that's used on this URL maps to the Java method, right? You could easily do a add post for another method, right? So there could be one more method, public, whatever. And uh, then there's a post method executed on this URL that's the method that gets called. That's the Java method that gets called. So that's the mapping that you're gonna to do to help Jersey find the right method to execute. So now Jersey knows, uh, now you, you do a get request to slash messages. Jersey knows, oh, slash messages, this is the class. And oh, it's a get request. So this is the method. It executes this method and it says, okay, I've got the return value, it is hello world. Now, how does Jersey send that value back, right? So it needs to send that in the response. How does it send it back? It needs one other piece of information. It wants to know what's the format that it needs to send this value in, okay? It needs to know the return format. And for that, this is the third and final annotation that's required to get this to work. It is the at produces annotation. Now this annotation basically tells Jersey what's the return content type, what's the return format of that request. And there's a handy enumeration that lets us specify the different values and that's called media type. Now media type is an enumeration that contains a lot of the standard content types that an HTTP response would return. So one of the content types that it has is text underscore plain. Now let me import media type. Now text underscore plain is basically an indicator that the response is plain text. We have other content types as well, like application XML, application JSON, we have a whole lot of stuff. But what we are interested in is text plain, since we're returning just simple text. Now this is the third annotation. And with this, we are finally done. Now we have a message resource class, which has three annotations. The first one is a path. The second one is the HTTP method. Here it's a get. And the third one is produces. Now with this three, we are finally ready. And now when there is a request to slash messages, this should return hello world in plain text response. So let's test that out. Okay, so I have my browser open and I'm gonna access the URL localhost 8080 messenger web API messages. Now if I hit enter, there you see hello world being printed. So there you go, you've created your first resource called message resource, which accepts a request for a particular resource URL and returns plain text. Now if you happen to look at the existing my resource class, well, things should look very familiar now. You do see the same path at annotation. You have the get annotation and then the produces annotation. Even this one has annotated with the media type that text plain to return plain text. So with this, we have a basic resource handler ready. And in the next tutorial, we're gonna enhance this a bit. Right now it's returning plain text. We're gonna enhance it to return an actual list of messages. See you in the next tutorial and thanks for watching.